just a little bit still shell shocked from Jaden's presentation. I mean, it was just so wonderful. Thank you, Jaden, for sharing your story and your passion. My, my talk today is about the power of the classroom and the power that teachers have over our young people. And over the last few months, um, I mean, it, it just shows you how incredible teachers are because we've faced so much change, uncertainty. We really had to react quickly to, to fix things. And I know that many parents at home are now saying, oh my God, thank God, thank God. How do you do it? Thank you to teachers. So it's just been, it's just been quite an interesting time for us. But there's been some good moments as well. So the good moments, talk, talking about other teachers, the fact that, you know, I, I feel that I've become better as a practitioner. I have, um, I've, I've had to transform everything about myself, everything about the way I teach. I've had to think very carefully about the language I use, how I assess um, through this square box right here. Um, it's been wonderful also seeing the quiet, calm, invisible children that we sometimes have in our classrooms, the ones that we don't really know how much progress they've made because sometimes just by having that one-to-one -one attention, which more or less teaching in this format does have, we've just seen them excel. They've been thriving. They've had the support at home. They've had um, the, the environment that was able to kind of um, make sure they can thrive. And so we've seen these, these moments and these pockets where people, young people have just blown us away. And they are, and, and for us, our challenge is making sure that now they're back in school is to keep them going and, and embracing that, that newly found confidence. But there's also been the bad and the bad, personally speaking, has been, has been the guilt the guilt I have felt, the guilt I've experienced by always saying to myself, was that good enough? Was that less than okay? Because I know that teaching my subject has been almost um, impossible to do the way that I would love to do it. And so I had this horrible guilt throughout the, throughout my mind. You know, do they do they have pencils at home? Do they have paper? Oh, no, they, they won't have this. Do they have paper? I doubt they'll have paper. Um, and so that's been something that I've also had had to, had to kind of overcome as much as far as possible. But also um, on looking at the student side, their embarrassment, the embarrassment of um, sometimes not being able to access because of the responsibility that they had, being a carer, having to, to more or less take over the household uh, because one person was working in the household um, and the others couldn't, couldn't cope without that um, child making sure that they were providing for the whole family. And then we had the ugly, and the ugly was hard. The ugly was really challenging. The ugly for us was the, the deaths of the family members. The ugly for us were the students who we know um, came to light in terms of their um, safeguarding issues, concerns. And also the, the ugly, the ones who disappeared. And that, that, those were the ones who, who really hurt the ones who um, were were not we could not engage that it doesn't matter what how many phone calls how many police visits that they were not engaging the fact that when you'd call home um, to say where is your son where is your daughter the parents were just waking up and it was twelve o'clock in the afternoon so you sometimes feel you know that that was the ugly the ugly moment for me um, during during this whole pandemic so coming back to the school, coming back to a school, um, how, do we, how do we feel? Well, I, I can probably speak on behalf of 99% of teachers in this country. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm thrilled. I wanna be in my classroom because as far as I'm concerned, the classroom is a place where magic happens and they're powerful places. Yes, we teach about the curriculum, but there's so much more that happens in classrooms. And I just want to tell you a couple of stories um, from teaching and, and experiences of, of, of who my best teachers were. Now, many of you out there, if I say to you, oh, you know, who was your best teacher? It would take you less than a second to say, oh, it was Mr. Jones or Mrs. Harper or Mr. Patel. Yes, that my drama teacher, my English teacher, he taught me this, she taught me that. If you were to ask me, I'd probably say, it was my student, Alvaro. And I'm gonna talk to you about, I'm gonna talk you through some of my, my student stories here because no matter what I have learned through my um, education in terms of going to, to teach a training college, um, the amount of books I've read, 
I have become a better teacher. I am a good teacher because of the things I have learned from my students. So Alvaro was a young man who came to our school um, when he was in uh, year, year 10. So he, he moved from a special educational needs school to, to my school. And it was very strange because um, he had many educa special educational needs labels and one of them was a selective mute. And when he came, I remember that I was, you know, I was in my early years of teaching and um, uh, um, the, the head of year at the time said, you know, I, um, and Mr. Hiraku, Andrew, um, this is Lovato, um, I'd like you to meet him. He's going to be joining your class. Um, he's come from the, the, the special school down the road. Um, and I was slightly taken back. I didn't have much data about this particular student. I wasn't sure how to engage with, with this particular student because he was absolutely terrified. And um, I remember meeting his parents and they, 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 they gave us a call. And one of the things which they said to us was, you know, we just want our son to go to a normal school normal school so in terms of expectations there were there were very little expectations and the fact that even the family didn't think that their child can get a GCSE Alvaro came into the school into my classroom and um, my art room is is fairly I'd say um uh, energetic <laughs> most of the times um, he came into my classroom and he was an absolute and I'll never forget he was an absolute tiny creature um, his head was down he was you know completely shell-shocked um, eyes fixed on the floor he came in he sat where he was meant to sit and I went up to him and I said Alvaro you know do you like art would you like to draw um, would you like to paint and there was just no movement whatsoever just stoic like this uh, the rest of the class were doing observational drawing, so I just put some paper and a pen on there. I just said, like, if you can, just have a go, have a go at drawing this object. The lesson went, and, and, and uh, after 45 minutes, it was finished. Um, and then what happened was, is that just before the end of the lesson, I just set a task for the students. Can you please draw an object at home, an observational drawing at home, um, so that we can uh, develop it next lesson? There was a stampede to the door as, as, um, as normal because it's lunchtime and the students are starving um, and, uh, and off um, Alvaro went with them. The next lesson, the students came back, I collected in the homework, I went up to Alvaro and I said, Alvaro, did you do the homework? Nothing, no signs, no, no nothing, no anything. And I felt like, oh my God, you know, no one, no one dares not hand in their homework to me. No one ever does that. But he did. And as I and as the students again left after the lesson, um, and again once again Alvaro did not engage and he did not do anything. Um, I saw him from the corner of my eye whilst I was speaking to some other students. He came and he dropped a piece of paper on my table. I did one of those, you know. I don't know if you know, but teachers, it's, it's genetically ingrained in us. We have. 3,000 eyeballs all around our heads. We have to have these. We have these sensors. We're like, like um, you know, radioactive spiders. We, have, we, we just sense everything. And from, there, from this part of my, <laughs> my head, I sensed Alvaro coming up and putting a piece of paper on my table. And I did one of those kind of double looks and I saw what he had produced and it was breathtaking. It was a drawing of a bass guitar and it was a tonal drawing, which he probably copied from the internet. Um, but it was spectacular. Uh, the, the strings, you could see the way that he captured the light, even on the tiniest detail. Uh, the tone was wonderful, the lighting which he hit, and it was just so sensitively done. And I, I can still visualize the image beautifully in my head. I saw that, and at that particular moment in time, I screamed, I absolutely screamed. I was like, ah! I probably just traumatized the poor child at that moment, but I, I ran up to him and I said to him, oh my God, did you do this work? Alvaro, look at me, did you do this piece of work? He then, he then looked at me and then um, for the first time ever, I saw his beautiful, bright gray, uh, gray eyes. Alvaro, did you do this work? He nodded. Okay, right, okay, so, oh my God, it's amazing, it's amazing, oh my God, okay, so, ran to the back of the classroom, ripped, ripped papers from um, some old sketchbooks, um, uh, looked at the bottom of my drawer, there must be some pencils, there must be where, right, got some pencils and some, um, a packet of oil pastels from the bottom of my drawer, threw them in the bag, went up to him, face on, I said, Alvaro, this is amazing, I want you to draw anything for me, anything, just draw, I want you to fill up these papers with, with paper, do you understand, Alvaro, do you understand? 
Alvaro, do you understand? Just nod or do that. Do you understand? And off he ran, escaping this crazy wild art teacher woman. It was, um, it was August 2000 and 2017, August 2017, that's right. Um, it was exam day. I was in school. I was biting my nails. Oh my God, what's going on? Has, has he passed? Has he not passed? He rushed up to me with his mum and they both squeezed me. They hugged me. Miss, have you seen my grades? I've got a grade D. I've got a grade D. Miss, thank you. I've got a grade D. My mouth dropped. Mum was crying. And then um, they, were, they were both celebrating. They said to me, but what, well, what's wrong, Miss Stephanie Rocker? Why are you not happy? And I said, because you could have got a grade A. Because if you came to my classroom when you were in year seven, we could have done this. To cut a lot, very long story short, because time is running out, um, Alvaro stayed for two more years and he managed to do A-levels in our school. And again, that's a blessing from the leadership of the school, allowing the student to do A-levels. Remember, that's the only GCSE he had. He got an A for his A-levels too. Now, the thing that I learned about Alvaro was number one, I had low expectations. I had low expectations for this child. And unfortunately, that's something that we need to break his parents thought he couldn't, I initially thought he couldn't, but I knew and I saw that through the power of the art room, through the power of my classroom, through the power of having belief in the young person, of, of finding that thing that will unlock his potential, he has succeeded. And for me, the beauty about this story, and that I will never, ever, ever forget, is the fact that not only did he become a confident young man, not only um, could we not shut him up from speaking, remember he was selected new, but he could not stop talking, um, but he was able to, to talk and teach the other young students in the art room as well. So from all those, I've been teaching for about 15 years now, and I'm still teaching, and the things that I've learned about what makes a great classroom is the fact that a teacher needs to be the person who young people want to talk to, want to build relationships with. You need to be a teacher who is willing to be tough, fair, but absolutely kind as well. And you are a kind of a teacher who really is passionate about their subject and teaching. If they see that you are someone who loves being in the classroom, who loves being in the presence, there is no way they will fail you there. And just to finally finish off, I know we've had a very traumatic time being teachers and over this last, these last few months. And again, I want to salute the amazing, the amazing profession that we're in. Um, but I'm very grateful for the knowledge and wisdom that I've had from my school and, and the colleagues around the world and from my students. And that it is honestly a privilege, privilege to work in education in this country. Thank you.